Hello everyone, my name is Polish Links. Welcome back to Everlasting Summer. Let's see how this horror will be looking in a second. I lay down and pulled a blanket over my head. I really wanted to sleep, but the realization that I might never wake up again if I fall asleep now was keeping me up and running. I'm not sure how long I spent lying like that, trembling at the rustle, but eventually the door burst open and steps resounded in the room. I barely peered out from under the black and it caught a glimpse of Alice and Marsha entering with a bucket of water and some bags. I see you went a bit cuckoo here. Yeah, sorta. I replied with a trembling voice trying to flash a smile. Everything's okay. Seems like it. I glanced at Lena yet again, but she was still sleeping quietly. Maybe it was indeed just my imagination. Sure, given a condition of such extreme emotional stress and physical fatigue, I might be seeing things. I got up with considerable effort, took a cup from the table and scooped up some water. So, what are we doing next? We'll have to stay here for now. But Olga Dimitrievna has called the police. Muttered Alisa. Yeah, but everyone disappeared after that. In any case, Antina Lena calms her senses. Although, if it ever happened to see her like that again, I would frankly rather that she doesn't wake up. Alisa lay down on Lena's bed and Masha sat down next to me. Get to some sleep? She gently stroked the top of my head. Can you really sleep with all this happening? We'll keep you guard, you look really tired. I guess she was right. Okay, but just enough. Wake me up before the evening. She didn't say the word, just smiled instead. Promise. I promise, replied Masha quietly. I closed my eyes and instantly tumbled into a dream. Here they come again, the grass bears. This time it's their king, a huge swamp green monstrosity with real long curved legs, wings that would match the wingspan of a large airliner and enormous peach black eyes. He was hanging over me grinning and spluttering something really loud. I still didn't understand anything on their language, but judging by the tone, it wasn't anything nice that you would hear on the morning news. <laughs> I wanted to get away, but he clutched me tightly with his wretched claw. Ugh, I could hear my bones cracking, feel my ribs breaking, piercing my internal organs with their sharp splinters. I felt hundreds of hammer smashing inside my skull. My vision faded and the next moment fountains of blood and flesh were spraying all over the place. I jumped up in a cold sweat, my own scream still reverberated in the room. It took me several seconds to clear the dimness from my eyes. I looked around frantically and realized that it was evening already and it was completely dark outside. Good grief, we didn't turn off the light yesterday. Marsh was lying asleep next to me, while Ruther was curled up on the floor. Len was lying on the other bed, tightly wrapped in the blanket. Yet Alisa was nowhere to be seen. Hey. I woke up Marsha with, up with a few rough broads. What? She slowly came to her senses. Didn't I ask you? Sorry, I fell asleep. She had such a guilty expression on her face that I felt sick. I shouldn't have relied on her. At least I could have set up an arm. I woke up Ruther. I woke Ruther up. Where's Alisa? I don't know. Sa said Sa Masha worriedly. Well, who does know? We were all asleep. Well, she was sleeping here and then... Her eyes darted around guiltily. And then you fell asleep. She hung her head and let out a heavy sigh. Oh, perfect. Just perfect. Don't be like that. I pounded my first fist on the table, making Masha jump. Okay, you sit here and I will go and find her. Alone? Her face suddenly took an expression of fright. Alone? Wasn't it you who told me that it's not worth panicking? Yeah, but it's not... Oh, fine, I'll go alone. But... Or do you really want to sit here with only Lena? Masha kept silent. It's dangerous to get alone. I noticed that Ruther seemed to have fully awakened. And it's not dangerous for her to sit here all alone. I felt that there was no point in arguing. But no point in arguing, so I got up, grabbed my trusty pipe and headed for the door. 
In any case, given that people have been disappearing into thin air, one can feel safe anywhere or in any other company. Of course, it still could turn out that Alisa just went somewhere. To the toilet, for example. Although, given how frightened she looked, I guess she would have woken up much or just have held it till morning. Damn, anything but going alone through the camp. I braced myself, pulled the handle and went outside. I swept my eyes across the landscape and then... Oh, for fuck's sake. I saw Alisa. Hanging high above the ground. From the tree right in front of the cabin. A sharp pain pierced my temples and I collapsed to the ground. The horror was so overwhelming that I literally felt my whole body being bound in steel chains. Blinded with fear, I barely managed to crawl back in the cabin and close the door. What happened? Masha rushed over to me. Don't look. I grasped her arm. Don't go outside. What's the matter? She reached out for the door handle. I attempted to solve her, but I was so weak that I could only let out a groan of despair. Opening the door, Masha screamed and froze in her tracks. Gathering my last ounce of strength, I got up and kicked the door shut. The next moment, Asha fainted and fell back into my arms. I carried her to the bed and put down next to the shaking router. His face told me that he's definitely not interested in knowing what happened there. All these screams woke Lena up. She rose slightly in her bed and gave us a glance. What's happening? She asked in a whisper. I didn't know how I should reply. I felt a scream rising up in my throat, but I managed to muffle it to a hollow sigh. Then I was horrified, but she still didn't realize what exactly had happened here. Don't go outside. I moaned. Unlike Masha, she wasn't one to argue. An oppressive silence ensued. Even the grasshopper seemed to quiet down in order to add suspense to the situation. Masha was still lying on my lap, Ruther was quivering in the corner of the bed and Lena was sitting in front of me with an expression of doom and despair on her face. I stared at the door with an unblinking gaze, waiting for the moment it would burst open and... My fear couldn't manifest in any concrete form, a homie maniac, a monster, an alien. It was the horror of the unknowable darkness and emptiness. I wasn't afraid that I would be torn to pieces just like Slavia, or I would become a zombie like Juliana. I was afraid to disappear, vanish without a trace from this world. Masha let out a quiet moan. I just had such a nightmare. It wasn't a dream. She opened her eyes wide and looked at me with horror. Then, there! Don't look. I shot and hastily embraced her. Then I started crying loudly, ran up and pressed herself against me, trembling all over. Long minutes dragged on in an agoniz agonizing silence. So, what are we going to do now? Asked Masha through her tears. She didn't seem so self-confident now. Although we're all in the same situation. Time passed, yet nothing happened. We had to make a decision. I couldn't say that I came back to my senses after what I saw, but I still felt my mind clearing up a bit. I knew one thing for certain. We can stay here. And it was because it was more dangerous here than anywhere else. It's just because I can't endure staying near the corpse of Alisa. I bet it's even more of a gut-wrenching experience for the girls. We have to go. I said quietly. I felt Masha and Lena hugging me even tighter. We have to. Ruther stopped shaking and left the bed. How are you feeling? I asked Lena. She said nothing. Can you walk? Probably. I gently escaped their embraces and got up. We have to run, and at night it will be easier to go. But we... Masha tried to make a humble objection. Yeah, I know that we decided to stay, but now we have to get out of here. I turned to Rother. You'd realize that they shouldn't see all that? He gave a barely visible nod. Over Ruther didn't know what happened to Alisa, it was obvious that his vivid imagination had conjured up so many gruesome theories during this time that he was probably even more depressed than me. 
Okay, we're gonna hold hands and go. I'll go first and lead the way. Masha goes next and Lena, then you. I looked at the girls. They were sitting with their hands hanging down, sobbing quietly. Ready? Nobody replied. This was obviously a useless question. One can never be ready for such a situation. I took Marsh's hand, turned around and gave Lena and Ruther a serious look. Okay, now shut your eyes and don't open them, no matter what. You got that? Yeah. Lena nodded. I stilled myself, first opened the door and went out, holding Marsha's hand. Watch out for the steps. When we made our way outside, I dared a final glance at Alisa. What I saw now didn't send me sprawling to the ground. Over my heart was racing frantically. I was feeling sick and dizzy and my stomach turned. She was hanging about 5 meters above the ground. Several neckerchiefs tied together in a string were tightened around her throat. Belgian guys, protruding tongue, put her factions already at work on the body. It looked like she didn't die a couple of hours ago, but at least a couple of days. An expression of agony and inhuman suffering was permanently frozen on her face. It was clear that she couldn't have done such a thing to herself. My god, who came up with all this? Maybe you are in hell? I hasted my steps away from the double calcine, dragging the others along. I ordered them to open their eyes only when we reached the square. She's... she's still there? Asked Masha, not letting go of my hand. I've just noticed. Who? Who? Alisa? Lena cried out loud and burst in tears. Masha embraced her and tried to comfort her. What happened to her? Met a trotter with a flat, faltering tongue. I bet you don't want to know that. For a while I just stood there and looked at the moon. Leno sobbing Ruther was pacing in circles around us and Marsha sat down on the bench and buried her face in her hands. Okay, it's time. I sat quietly yet nobody moved. We can't stay here. I walked to Marsha, then leaned over and took her hand. She raised her eyes filled with tears and me and nodded. We slowly proceeded to the bus stop. Night has fallen on the camp. Along the way I noticed that the grasshoppers were almost quiet. Too quiet. Skipping silent for some time. Now very soon their nasty song, but this time it was much quieter and, I might say, a little bit more respectful. Their daytime progressive noise changed to a nocturne for violin or and orchestra. Is there any chance they are conscious about what's going on here? Of course, if we assume that there are grasshoppers in hell too. We came to the bus stop and stopped, hesitating. So, where are we going? Asked Masha, weeping her tears. Okay, we already tried going to the right, let's go to the left. But there is no town there. And just a couple of days ago, there was no camp to the right. Maybe we shouldn't? Then I sobbed quietly. We have no choice, I won't stay here any longer. We were just about to get moving when we heard noises approaching us from far away. I turned my eyes and caught a glimpse of someone coming here down the road. A bus! exclaimed Ruther with joy in his voice. Shut up, you fool, that's not a bus. People are approaching. I hissed at him. Lots of people! said Masha anxiously. It was utterly clear that we shouldn't stay here any longer. <gasps> a fucking zombies! I turned around and saw someone approaching us down the road from the other direction too. The noise was getting louder. The chirping of grasshoppers, although not the usual, a much louder, distorted version, as if it had been passed through a guitar amplifier. Run! I shouted, but nobody moved. Oh, screw it! I grabbed Masha and Lena's hands and darted off back into the camp. The girls were floundering in a stupor, so I ended up literally dragging them along. Having dashed the square, I stopped to catch some breath, and only then did I realize that Ruther had been left behind. We have to go back to get him! Masha screamed and shifted towards the bus stop. Are you nuts? I pulled her hand and forced her to stop. You want us to all meet the same fate? Then I was trembling so widely that I felt my right hand shaking as it held hers. Keep running. Where to? Don't know, into the woods. Returning to Olga Dmitrievna's cabin wasn't an option. 
my self-preservation instinct also suggested that we shouldn't stay in the open area as well. We dashed towards the woods. I held girl's hands tightly. I don't know if it's a good idea. They ran with difficulty, especially Nana, who was swaying and way weaving. She fell a few times, but I quickly beat her up, spurring her on with shouts and dragged her on. Passing through the trees was the hardest part. Though the full moon was shining up the sky, in the dark I was still constantly running into snacks, branches, falling into pits. Nettles were slashing my legs and leaves were hitting me in the face, leaving painful scratches. My heart was pounding heavily, every breath I took whistled painfully in my lungs, the blood was pounding so heavily in my head that it seemed like my skull was ready to burst from the pressure any moment. I stopped feeling my body, my legs carried my forward, me forward by themselves. At last we ran out into a clearing and stopped. Exhausted, the girls fell to the ground and I sat on the fallen tree. Who were they? People or demons? Or something else? And where was that chirping sound coming from? I couldn't make them out in the field light, but that was probably for the best. After I slightly recovered my senses, I walked up to the grass. Then I was lying dead white on the ground, seems like she'd completely lost it. Masha was sitting, hugging her knees and rocking from side to side. We've got to do something. I said as I sat near her. It's too late, we're gonna die! She whispered in a hollow voice. We're still alive. That means there's still hope. No, there's nothing though. It's all over. I put my arms around her and held her tight. No, it's not. Alright. Let's end the episode with that thought. And we'll see how this will go in the next episode. Bye.